The way that we do that is the GWT compiler takes your Java source code and cross-compiles it into highly optimized JavaScript that downloads quick quickly, it runs quickly in all the popular web browsers that your users are likely to use. But of course, you know, you've seen that before. It works great, no problem. The question is, where do you get that Java source code in the first place? For a really huge Java app, sometimes a lot of the code can be sort of boilerplate code, the sort of code that connects your, your browser to the data store in the back end. That's the sort of code that you don't really want to have to write. And so when we started working with VMware, uh, we said, hey, you know, this, what about this? And they said, you know, we have a tool that does exactly this. It saves you a whole bunch of time writing the code that you don't want to automatically on your behalf. So we used Google Waves to coordinate uh, the engineering teams between Sydney, Germany, Atlanta, uh, Mountain View, and San Francisco. We used it all the time, round the clock, every day, working together. And, uh, and we made GWT and Spring Roo work together. The tool I was talking about is Roo, and we are lucky to have the father of Roo, Ben Alex, here to tell you more about Roo and to show you Roo in action. Ben. Thanks, Bruce. So as we were thinking about what to do for you today, we thought, what better way of showing you the tooling work that we've been doing together than to build you an application live on stage? And it occurred to us that there's something that's very near and dear to most of our hearts in this room, expense reports. We're all probably going to go home and log expense reports. So we thought, let's build you an enterprise application that will store expense reports. What's interesting about this, though, is we're going to build this application for you. We're going to have a GWT front end. We're going to build the back end with Roo with all the spring goodness. And we're going to do this in less than 200 keystrokes. So let's get started. So I have here an empty directory. And we load up Roo. Roo is an open source tool that you can go and download. And it has a text mode. There's also a graphical version, which I'll show you a little bit later. But Roo loads up. It looks like this. You can get full command help with Roo by typing hint at any time. And let's start our project. So here I've specified my Java top level package. And we need some databases. So let's go and do that. Persistent setup. Notice that tab's working. We have data nucleus, which is great if you're going to be deploying to the Google App Engine. But we're going to deploy to hypersonic in memory for now. So now that we've got our persistence layer, let's create some entities. So this database is going to have two tables to start with. It's going to have an employee table, and it's going to have a report table. Let's make the tables, and let's put some, items into the, put some columns into them. So here I've used the GWT conventions of specifying that this is a server uh, class, so therefore don't compile it down to JavaScript. And let's add some fields. And we can use the up arrow to save a little bit of time. And let's go and get a report. And for something different, let's add a date field. So it's going to be the created date for our expense report. And I think we'll take a Java date for that. Terrific. So now we've actually got the Java backend taken care of. We could run this up if we wanted to, but let's get a front end. Let's get a GWT front end. As a result of the integration work we've been doing, it's super easy to do that. All I have to do is type GWT, press tab, and press enter. So what's happening now is Roo's going to have a look at our domain model. It's going to turn this into a GWT application. It looks at all of our columns, all of our entities, and does that for us very quickly. You can run this up in the development mode just like you normally would if you're familiar with GWT. To save a little bit of time, I've done that for you already. And this is what the resulting scaffolded application looks like. So it's very simple at the moment. We have the uh, tables that we promised. And we can go and create a new employee. And it goes and stores it as we'd expect. You need to edit all, all the normal sort of cruddy stuff. But something that occurs to me is, what if we wanted to put an extra column in there? What if we wanted to put, say, a comment column? How do we do that? Well, the good thing is Roo supports full round tripping. And we have a tool called Spring Source Tool Suite. This is our free IDE, which you can also go and download. And it has comprehensive Roo integration, as illustrated by this Roo logo down at the bottom. So in order to add an extra column to our database, you just edit in the normal Java fashion, string comment. And I haven't saved yet, but when I click the Save button, I'd like you to just look in this area down at the bottom of the screen. So what's happened is Roo's automatically detected that I've changed my Java class, and it's gone and updated all of the necessary GWT user interface bits and pieces. In order to see this in action, I just go over to development mode, click Refresh. It's a very fast refresh. It only takes about two seconds, which is unbelievably fast. And now if we have a look at Data Browser, and we refresh the browser app, employees, and there we have it. We now have a comment field. And just to show you that it works, and it persists fine. 
so what we've done in just a couple of minutes is we've gone from an empty directory, we've typed less than 200 characters, and we've ended up with a GWT front end scaffolded for us with full round tripping capability. So this is a great way of saving time as you're building new GWT applications. At this point, I'm going to hand you back to Bruce, who's going to come us cover some of the other integrations we've added to SDS. Thank you, Ben. So uh, 200 keystrokes later, we have the basics um, of an application, a scaffolding app that we can build on. You saw STS, the IDE experience. We've also integrated Google plugin for Eclipse and GWT and Apigen SDKs right there in STS so that you have all the tools you need right there at your fingertips. So we use that environment to continue iterating on the app using GWT and Roo to continue to um, add you know, new features and so on. And after a couple of days, turned it into a pretty real expense reporting app. So, uh, you know, added a little bit of UI polish, and, um, and, you know, it's a nice, rich web application. So I keep saying rich web application. What's exciting about that? Well, it's a much better user experience. So let me point out a couple of things. First of all, it's very fast. So I'll, um, I'll refresh just to show you how fast it starts. Ready? One, two, three, refresh. Refresh, refresh, refresh. That's drawing the UI, and that's getting the data, and it's up and running. Um, that's about 500 milliseconds. Not bad. It's part of the reason for that, by the way, is that the app is only 100K. It's, it's optimized JavaScript, as I mentioned, and that includes even the CSS and the image resources encoded as data URLs. Another nice thing about this style of rich web application that runs heavily inside the browser is that you don't have that sort of stuttery web 1.0 click and wait kind of feel. So for example, when I want to drill down on one of these expense reports, I don't have to wait for a new page to come up. I'm going to click this, and you'll see it animates and translate, transitions um, very fluidly, right? One, two, three, click, and there I have the details. So this is the way you want to work. It keeps users engaged, and it helps you speed, basically speed things up. One other nice thing about a rich web application is it gets exactly the data you need right when you need it. In traditional um, HTML server-side applications, you tend to spit out a lot of HTML with data intermingled because you're not sure what the user might want to see. But when I have an interactive application, I know what the user wants. So for example, if I want to see the number of people in the engineering department, I'll click on this triangle. And right when I click, it will fetch exactly the data that I need to answer that one uh, user action. Click. And that actually did a network round trip, found two employees, populated the UI, and showed them. And uh, we, we think that's fantastic. It really speeds up the app and makes it feel uh, more responsive to what you're actually doing. Now, if you've been using GWT for a while, and we hope you have, Probably nothing I'm saying here, aside from Roo, is actually new to you. You know that you can build these sort of rich web applications uh, pretty easily. What is still a problem, though, once you get your app up and working, is how do you make sure that it performs well? Some of these apps get really large, and there can be bottlenecks inside the browser that are hard to diagnose. <clears throat> so to address this, we created a tool called Speed Tracer. We launched Speed Tracer in December as part of um, GWT 2.0. And I'll turn on Speed Tracer here. It's a Chrome extension. I'll continue to use the app. And Speed Tracer is in the background, paying attention to what I'm doing and recording information. So here, I will pause it. I'm going to zoom out. You see this is a nice HTML5 WYSI UI, all built in GWT, of course. I look at the sluggishness graph. I see a peak. That's an area that I could optimize if I want to. I'll drill down, and Speed Tracer shows me this bar, which has a lot of stuff going on. And it tells me down to the millisecond where time is going. So I see that a lot of the time is script evaluation, but it's also parsing HTML, recalculating styles due to CSS changes, uh, doing layout. You can even see things like garbage collection. Basically, there's not even a single millisecond of time that happens within the browser that you cannot find out about in Speed Tracer. It's like an x-ray machine for your browser's guts, right? But that's not where all the time goes in an application. Sometimes the server is what's actually slow. So we realized what we need <clears throat> is a tool that's sort of like Speed Tracer, but for the server. Well, it turns out that tool exists also, and uh, Spring Source had it. It's called Spring Insight. And Spring Insight tells you on a request-by-request -request basis the timings of various actions inside the server. So as I was using this app, I was gathering Spring Insight data. Here I can drill in, and you can see uh, there was an HTTP post that did a, a JDBC select, and I can drill down to see even more details. So if you think it would be neat to combine that information with Speed Tracer, we think alike, because that's exactly what we did. And so uh, I'll go back to the Network tab here, and I can see 
a pretty traditional looking network view like you might have seen in Firefox or, or WebKit Inspector, except now I have these nifty icons here that say, hey, for this request, I have data about timings on the server side as well. 